What's going on guys, Matt over here with Lethal Garage and today there's kind of a lot of things going on but specifically in this video I'm going to show you how to pull the A8 transmission out of a 6th gen Camaro SS. So in this instance um, we're actually putting a converter in my car but this specific video is going to focus on pulling out and putting back in the A8 transmission for the car. Let's go ahead and do it. First thing to know pull the negative terminal because we're going to be working around things that will be hot and live and you do not want to screw things up so make sure to do that so step one put your car in a lift yeah looking really good so in this instance mike cunningham motorsports aka bowtie bridges working on this obviously ryan's going to be tuning the converter and all that stuff making it shift and all that greatness um yeah cunningham amazing but you have to pull the headers, or sorry, you have to pull the passenger side header to then be able to remove the starter so you can actually get to the torque converter bolts. You have to do this process regardless to pull the transmission and the converter. So in that instance, that means pulling your overflow. Oh, we're getting juicy. So in today's video, I am not going to go over all the tools that are required because there's going to be a lot of them. But in this instance, as you know, we're already getting into the header side. Did you say you had to pull the dipstick? Yeah, you have to pull the dipstick. So yeah, we got to pull the dipstick. So you are going to need a little bit of oil to replace oil that's going to be coming out of the vehicle. Uh, yeah, lots of fun projects, but we're going to fast forward through some of this stuff. I'll try to go slow enough so you can see what's actually happening but literally at this point, pulling the headers and all that greatness. Spark plugs pulled. Looking good. Denzo. So now Mike's getting in, it's getting the header pulled. He just is getting the dipstick pulled. There's a nice little screw that holds that in place. And one of the things I love about Mike, he's super methodical. Everything's gonna, like when he's done, this whole top of this tool chest is gonna be covered with bolts in his own way, his own everything. Header gasket. How's that looking? Good, it's not even leaking. <laughs> it's not even leaking, I like how he says that. And your dipstick. Okay, all the bolts from the header are removed. And now it's time to lift her up and start getting into the fun stuff. Okay, so at this point in the process, I'm gonna take off the bottom plate, drop that, and we're gonna get into some fun. So take heed, there's uh, on the passenger and driver's side, your fender liner, there's a couple of screws that are holding in the corners of the plastic plate. Gotta remove those. A little, little pop clip. Sorry, it's a little dark, but you can see the clip hole right there. Okay, now we're moving all the main bolts across the main. I guess we'll call it an underplate. I'm sure there's a more technical term for it. On the, uh, is it the upper one? It's the one. Oh, right here. Uh oh. Yeah, Hidden bolt in the padding. Found it. Okay, now it's time to unbolt parts of the exhaust. Pull your sensors, O2 sensors. Get your rear sensors, or in my case, I have a wide band back here. So Mike, Mike seems to have forgotten what a pain in the butt our exhaust is, so we're disconnecting everything down the line to uh, loosen it up and drop everything down. And uh, he was smart and sprayed everything with like a soy lube. 
so things will come apart easier in theory. Okay, making progress. Exhaust has been dropped. Still got a hanging header, but yeah. There it is over there, stainless work system on the floor. Was oh, that the tunnel braces? Yeah, that's just a little tunnel brace. It doubles as a drive shaft loop. Yay. Oh, I should have brought that with me too. Do you have one of those? I do, it's sitting in the garage. You do have some miscellaneous shielding. All this stuff has to come off. And off that bolt reveals your beautiful shifter cable. And uh, it's literally just sitting in this bracket. Drop that down. And then to avoid breaking the plastic clips, I just pull the nut. Oh, that's always good. <clears throat> Did you just move that through all eight gears? Reverse. Neutral. There you go. I can no longer shift my transmission. Now you want to remove the bolts for the shield on the cooling lines and pull that bad boy out. Obviously there's cooling lines everywhere so it's a little tricky but just finesse it a little bit. It will love you. I promise. We got the shielding off disconnected the actual drive wire or your shift cable and now it's time to take off the D <laughs> the drive shaft Fantabulous. without that you don't go Pulling K-member bolts. Not all the way out. Not all the way out, because you obviously don't want it to fall on your face. Next process, removing the starter so we can get the torque converter bolts. And it's a really tight squeeze in here, so it's gonna be hard to see anything, but just know the starter, passenger, front side. There's a shield. This is There's why. your heat shield. Also why they have to loosen up earlier. Yeah. Uh, I'm, if you guys recall, we replaced my starter and we did it with the headers in, and I think it took how long? Because that bolt was impossible to reach? A lot longer than it should have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you guys are wondering, the starter is right there. Okay, so your flex plate, bolts on there, six of them, get them all off. That's how we're getting the torque converter again. That is right behind the starter. So you remember that starter that we took out? It's sitting right here. And apologies, not going to be recording Mike getting his tool in there, undoing the bolts, but you can see he's got his beautiful snap-on tool. Nope, maybe not. Going for something smaller? I don't know. Oh, oh, he's going long rod. So another angle, you can actually see the flex plate in there, and as he's rotating it, you were able to see the bolts, but we're getting a lot of the bolts off, and this thing is so slow. There you go, we got five bolts off. What, one left? One left. So there's a transmission line on the passenger side. There's a bolt holding it in place so it doesn't vibrate and shake. Just taking that off. So the rear cradle holding the back side of the transmission is literally held in place with four bolts. And I'm, I'm starting to think that that cradle is... Uh, it's not metal, that's like, is it metal or is it a composite? No, it's aluminum. Oh, is it aluminum? Oh, okay. See, see what I know? This is why I pay people to do the things I don't understand. So I don't think Mike has to pull this, but he's actually pulling the whole brace so I can get a better shot of some other aspects of pulling things apart. It's gonna be fancy. So now that we're at this point, there is a big fat plug. Yeah, it kind of looks like a German light socket. <laughs> uh, but those are tricky. Obviously, it has a safety clip, which I'm assuming is the red. Mm -hmm. And then applying pressure and pulling that bad boy out is going to be fun, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's kind of like the seat clips. 
this point, we have the plug out. Mike is now removing some zip ties and sensors and little clippies that are holding the cables in place because we got to get it all clear because we do have to drop the transmission. So again, Mike is working his way around, getting clips undone, moving stuff out of the way. So in that case, you can see, well, it's hard to point at things, but there's a clip right up here that he pulled out. We dropped the tranny jack a little bit to reveal more of the bolts on the backside. Now Mike is reaching up in there and actually getting those bolts loosened out. So those upper bolts are proving to be a pain. We got a ratchet in there and it literally has that much play. Like there's like you're not getting the bolt out with that. So what Mike is doing now is he's removing or loosening up two or pulling the two bolts from the cam member and put an additional jack stand underneath to make sure it doesn't fall and hopes to maybe get another inch or two of drop on the transmission to hopefully be able to get better access to the upper bolts. That's where we're at right now. I, I doubt at this angle you can't really see the bolt we're getting to. I'm, <laughs> I'm literally in the drive shaft tunnel right now. But uh, once Mike starts getting his tool in there, I'm sure you'll be able to see a little bit better where we're getting at. Oh, shit. What? Got it right on it? Maybe. Oh, I see it. <laughs> and that worked. So I don't know if you guys could see it, but the upper right hand corner in the tunnel, there is looks like just like a i don't know what that tube is maybe it's just coating wires or something like that this one here or no the one, one above it oh that's that is wire that's the wiring that's the main harness yeah so protecting that up in there but the bolt's hiding behind that and uh, it's making it really difficult to get to it what i didn't realize is the actual bolt that we were getting to was the bolt holding on those plastic things, basically just clips keeping them from shaking free and holding loose. Uh, again, I don't know if you could see this in the video, it's really hard and dark and cramped down here, but that upper bolt, it's just, it's at a weird angle. It's just hard to see, but you could see it. it's straight in the middle. It kind of is, it looks white, but it's right by that black tubing. And uh, yeah, that's the final bolt. Now we got all the bolts off the transmission. It's basically disconnected from the oil pan and the block. We're taking off the oil transmission line or the cooling line or whatever line that is. There's a big bolt in the center. And when you pull this off, it's going to make a mess. And this is the reason why we brought extra tranny fluid. So children, you use the metal chain to keep the transmission on the plate. <laughs> because we do not want it on the floor. Curse splat. That's how that game was invented. You guys didn't know that, but now you do. So technically all the bolts are done. Everything's disconnected. In theory, if we drop this lift, the transmission should be set free, but there is that line that kind of has me worried. This one. I guess you just have to kind of pull to the left. Oh, break free from the other side. <laughs> oh, sorry. Break on through. I quit. We have set free the transmission. We have separation. Now it's a matter of the game. There's your stock torque converter. Looks like an upside down mushroom, kind of, a little bit. 
That, my friends, is an A8 transmission. Transmission is officially out. A8 transmission pulled from the car. The steps, I mean, with the motor in the car, it's kind of a pain, but dropping that K-member a little bit more with the extra stand really allowed us to get to those bolts. If you remember, they were the ones up here. Actually, this bolt here and that one up there. Yeah, these two here specifically. Yep. And, uh, yeah, she's pulled. She's out. That's what makes her go. At least that's what shifts her. So, the next fun project is replacing this shiny thing. I guess I could take turn the flashlight on. Automatic transmission, flex plate, ring gear. You can see the ring gear is welded. It's like tack welded, basically. Uh, according to Mike, good ones are welded all the way around everywhere. Uh, for those of you who are manual drivers, that would be your flywheel with the same ring gear uh, attached. So a little bit of differences there, but automatic life. So that's how you remove a transmission in a 2016 Camaro, the A8. So that was a fun project that Mike undertook. I was the cameraman holding a light bulb, but really the only hard parts were getting those bolts. And again, um, loosening up the, uh, is it the K member? Right? Yeah. Yeah. So loosening up the K member a little bit more, putting an extra stand in the front so nothing fell out of the car, uh, allowed us to get to those other two bolts. Again, Mike has a full tool set. So he had a long extension. He had multiple, uh, adapt like, uh, what are they called? Uh, flexible adapters and all that stuff that allowed to get to things. So, uh, if you're going to attempt to do this in your garage, make sure you have a nice suite of tools to get it done. Um, but pulling the transmission, it takes time. Uh, it's possible. Actually, I think it, I mean, without having to fiddle with those bolts, it was probably, it took us more time just getting all the little things out, like the exhaust, getting all the fairings and covers and all that junk off than it was actually pulling the tranny. So uh, if you're looking to replace your transmission, hopefully this video was helpful. Obviously going back in, uh, it's literally just reversing the process. So don't forget to triple check bolts, screws, clips, bolts, screws, clips, uh, and maybe bolt screws and clips again. <laughs> but there you guys have it. If you guys have any questions, post them down below. As always, thanks for watching the video. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this content. Likes, comments, shares are appreciated. But until next time, I'll see you on the road.